Another way that we can use to represent the total outcomes or the sample space of problems that have two steps in probability is the use of two-dimensional grids. For example, let's pretend that we're going to flip a coin twice. On one of those coins, we could get a heads or a tails. And the other coin, we could get the same thing, a heads or a tails. I'm going to list it just the other way. What we can do here is we can set up what's known as a two-dimensional grid to represent all of our outcomes. And they can take various formats. So for example, we could put a dot wherever we've got an outcome here within this grid. So we've got tails and tails, we've got a tails and heads, and a heads and heads. And then the first one I put was a heads and tails. So what we can see here is we've got four total outcomes. And what we can do is we can look at what is the probability of, say, getting two tails. And we look here and we can put, say, a little x where we've got a successful outcome. So in this case, we've only got the one successful outcome. So the probability of getting two tails is a one out of the four total outcomes that we've got. Another way that we could represent our two-dimensional grid, though, is instead of putting little dots to represent each outcome that exists, we can actually list them. So here we've got heads and tails. We've got tails and tails. Uh, we've got heads and heads. And we've got tails and heads. And then when we look to answer our problem, we just circle which ones are our successful outcomes. There is another way that we could start using these. Let's consider, for example, we're going to roll two four-sided dice, just numbered one to four on each. On dice one, the outcomes that you could get are a one, two, a three, or a four. And then on the second dice, you could get the same. But I'm just going to list it backwards. A four, a three, a two, and a one. You don't have to list it backwards, but I just like to do that. We could do the exact same thing and put a dot wherever there's an outcome. So a one, four, a two, four, and then just keep going till we've listed all of the outcomes. So as you can see here, I've got a four by four grid, so there are 16 total outcomes. And I could do the same thing to answer problems that I did before. But let's say that we've got a probability problem that I want to look at what our chances are of getting a sum that is equal to or greater than 4. In this case, we've got to add the face value of dice 1 with the face value of dice 2. So instead of using dots to represent our outcomes, we could actually use the sum to represent it in here. So we could go on dice one, we got a one and a four. So the sum here would be a five. On this option, we've got a two and four. So the sum is a six. A three and four will mean a sum of seven. And we repeat for the remainder. So now in our two dimensional grid, we've got the sum of each possible outcome that exists. So what I can now do is I can look at well my success criterion is equal to or greater than four. So that's going to be every possible outcome that's this side of the line. So it's only three that don't meet our successful criteria. So the probability of getting something equal to or greater than four is going to be 13 outcomes of a possible 16. So two-dimensional grids are very useful for representing the sample space of two-step events and only two-step events. And they can take various formats. We can use dots to represent each individual outcome of our sample space. We can actually list the outcomes like I've got here. Or we can use uh, our sample space here to represent special situations. Here, for example, I looked at it when we added the face of the dice together, what the result would actually be for each outcome. 